everyone. Welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. This is episode number seven of my Luminar 4 Creative Edit Series. We're starting out with this image today right here and turning it into this image. So this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to show you all the steps and, uh, and even some issues that I've run into along the way. So uh, without any further ado, let's get started. The first thing I did was I went into, I did nothing under the Essentials tab, but I went in into the Creative tab, and I used about four different filters in here. And I started out with the LUT filter. And so let's click on the LUT filter here, and let's turn this uh, filter on here and show you what I did here. So I used this uh, sepia LUT. Now, if you click right here, you'll see a drop down. Here's all your different lookup tables in here. And I love these because they, they really help you to get nice... Uh, creative like color grading effects and give you nice uh, just color looks in your image and I like the sepia look here so that's what I chose I was really happy with that and that started me off on this journey to this edit that I eventually came up with but this was my inspiration right here so I used the sepia and I have an amount of 40 and I gave it a little extra contrast and saturation and then uh, let, let's click on edit mask here I'll click on brush so I can show you what I did Here's the color overlay, and it, you can get that color overlay right here by clicking this little eye right here. And basically what I did here was I removed that LUT from the hair, because I wanted to keep that hair more red, because I love the red hair here and the lips. So I just removed it from those two areas, okay? And then after that, I went to one of my favorite filters in here, and that's the Mystical filter right here. So let's click on Mystical, and let me turn that on to show you what it did. So it just adds a nice little softness to everything here, and I was really happy with that on it, especially on her face and the clothes and everything. It, it's just a beautiful look, and I have an amount of 49, and I uh, opened the shadows up a little bit here to a 61. And uh, pulled the saturation back slightly, and I did not touch the warmth here, but I did do a little bit of masking here. Let's click on Edit the Mask and show you what I did here. Click on Brush so we can see this. So basically what I did was I removed it from the hand right here. Okay, because I didn't want the hand getting too glowy. So that's what I did there. And after that, I went and added a glow filter. So because I liked what the mystical was doing, but then I went to the glow filter. And let's turn that on. I'll show you. I added a nice soft focus here. So let's toggle that off and on. Isn't that beautiful? And this really works out nice with like uh, models and things like that. The glow is a really beautiful effect. And I use the soft focus. Now you have three different modes in here. You have soft focus, uh, soft focus bright, and soft glow. I chose the soft focus because I thought that added a really beautiful, elegant effect for this particular image right here. I really love this glow filter. It, it just puts a nice, soft, dreamy look, and it, it works great in conjunction with the mystical filter, okay, or the Orton effect. It's really nice, but I love the soft focus here. So let's uh, take this amount off, and you can see it without it. And I just started pulling up in this, and I thought, oh, look how dreamy that looks. It's just really adding to the mystical filter. And I ended up with an amount of, like, 30. I thought that looked really beautiful on this particular model. I was really happy with it. I thought it was a little too bright. Now, the brightness defaults at zero, so I just took it back to, like, a minus 25. And you could keep taking it back. But a minus 25, for me, was right. So I left it right there. Now, I already, I didn't want it on the hand and the arms here. And I already made a uh, layer mask for Mystical. And I took it off that area. So I thought, well, why, uh, you know, why uh, do a whole new masking job? So basically what I did was I came up here and I right clicked on the mask here and clicked on copy. And that copied the mask. Now, this mask wouldn't be here. So what you'd have to do... Uh, to paste the mask, you'd have to go into Edit Mask and click on the Brush Tool and just come up here to Mask and click Paste. And that would just paste that layer mask on there. So, you know, why do extra work when you don't have to? So, you know, take advantage of layer masks you've already made, copy them and just paste them if you can use that, ex that exact mask on another filter. So that saves you a little bit of time. And the last filter I used in the uh, creative section here, or the creative tab, was the texture overlay. And I used one of my own textures because uh, Luminar 4 does not provide textures with, uh, with the program. So you have to use your own textures. But let's turn this on and I'll show you. I used one of my textures from uh, Fly, Fly Paper Textures. 
and uh, to load your texture all you do is click on load texture and your file browser will open up and then you just point Luminar to the file folder that your textures are in okay but I chose one of mine this particular texture here I put it in the multiplied blend mode now let's click this blend mode here and the thing I love about Luminar is you hover if you hover over these blend modes you can see the effect that they'll have have on your image so it's really nice so and sometimes it's a blend mode that you think wouldn't work I've already had like maybe like a difference blend mode like this or a sub a subtract blend mode work for a texture you just never know so try all the different ones but I settled on multiply I thought that looked best and then you have an opacity here and I chose an opacity of 20 but you could take this up higher and add more texture or less it depends on your mood and your tastes okay so I put this on a 20 and I thought that looked good. And uh, now you also have a zoom here so you can zoom uh, in or zoom out like this. And you can actually see the texture there. Uh, if you double click, it defaults. It just puts the texture, covers your entire image here. But if you don't like the size of this texture here, you could zoom this up and make that texture look bigger. So you have a lot of uh, playing uh, room in here to play around so I just left it at the default of zero I was happy with that I added a little bit of brightness to the texture and I this is a really good little tip here the contrast defaults at zero adding no extra contrast so if you move the contrast to the right you add more contrast but it'll make the texture kind of pop out more so if you want a little more texture in your image this is a good uh, slider to start to pull up to the right but if you want to de-emphasize some of that texture you can pull it to the left in my case I pulled it the whole way off because I just wanted a slight amount of texture in there so I took it off and also remember I used that color lookup table the color styles LUT here I used that sepia LUT and I, it was a little on the warm side and I love it but this uh, texture also has some warmth to it so I didn't want any extra warmth in there so I took the saturation the whole way to the left to a minus 100 so I took any saturation off that texture that was there okay and uh, let's see and then on the layer mask let's click on edit mask and click on brush my overlay is turned on right now so you can see the overlay and you can see I removed it from the model here that's all I did there and click done because I didn't want that texture over the model I didn't want her to have a modeled skin look you know uh, I thought that wouldn't look good so I took that off of there all right and uh, I think that was it yeah that's all I did in the uh, creative section next we're going to move on to the pro tab now we'll click on the Pro tab here. And inside here, I use two filters. I use Dodge and Burn and Color Enhancer. I do love Color Enhancer. Uh, so let's click on this right here. And let me turn it on. Let's hit, click this toggle right here, and you'll see what it did. But it made, you know, I added some color contrast here. I used this, uh, where is it, color contrast right here. I wanted this hair to really pop and the blue jeans to give them you know, to have a little bit more uh, contrast to them, to them as well. And so... The color contrast, it uh, defaults with the hue on red here, which is a really nice place to be if you want to add contrast to the reds and the blues of your image here, okay? And the uh, amount starts out at zero. And basically what I did is I started to move it to the right and see that red and the blue jeans start to contrast contrast really well. And that looked really nice. And I you can keep going up and it'll look really horrid, but I took it up to... Where was I at? Was I, at a tw I think it was like at a 20. Yeah, I was around. I don't think I was at 30. 30 is not bad. Let's split the difference. I'm going to go around at 25, 24, 25, right around there. That looks really nice. And I played with the uh, split color warmth just a little bit uh, with the warm tones and the cool tones there. I just altered those slightly to taste. And then after that filter, I added one more filter, and that was the Dodge and Burn filter here. And um, let me go ahead and turn that on. Let me just click this toggle here. And let's click it off. So you can see that. It's just a subtle. I just wanted to bring out some of the, uh, I dodged her hair here on the highlights, and I also burned the shadow areas here. I thought that looked really nice. And I also took the, uh, burned some of these shadows down below her here and also on her clothes here so let's toggle that one more time so there's before and there's after and I love dodging and burning it's something I like to do on just about every image that I make it really will set your images apart 
I wanted to add one more texture and it was a border texture. And basically what I mean by that, it would have a border around the edge here of the image, which I thought would really set this image apart. Now, whenever you're working on a layer, you can only have, uh, if whatever filter you're using, you can never double up a filter. You have to use a new adjustment layer to double up a filter. And as you recall, I've already used a uh, texture overlay uh, filter. So, or tool so I need to go with a new uh, adjustment layer to add a new texture and I did that but here was a problem I had I loaded up my texture and it was a border texture but there is no transform tool in the texture overlay tool so you can't transform the uh, the uh, image okay so basically what was happening was I had the border on the top and the bottom but not on the sides and I thought well this is an issue this is a problem how can I get around it so I came up with the idea I know what I'll do I'll come to the layers I'll add a new uh, image layer and I'll add the texture through an image layer now this is a really cool thing so if you ever need to add a texture with a border on it you're not going to be able to use the um, the uh, texture overlay tool to do it you have to come to a new image layer and that's what I did here and I'll let's turn this uh, layer on that I added right here so you can see here and there see the border here so you're not able to transform the uh, image to fit your to fit your particular picture okay but when you add a new image layer you can come here to layer transform and I'll click this and you'll see what happens here in a second you'll get this uh, uh, bounding box comes up here. So you can adjust the sides or the tops and bottoms. And if you hover out over the edge, see that little, uh, little circular shape of the two arrows, you can adjust the angles and things too. But you can transform it to fit your image, which is really cool. And I'll click done here. So, so again, remember, if you ever have, uh, you want to add a texture with a border like this, you're going to have to come and add a new image layer. Very, very important. Okay, so that's what I did here. And I put it in the multiply blend mode, okay? Because that blend mode worked really nice for this particular image. And the, you get the blend modes right here. And again, you can hover through the blend modes and see how the different blend modes interact with your image. So, I mean, that soft light blend mode looks kind of cool too, but I didn't want quite as much texture on there, so I chose the multiply blend mode, which actually has more texture, come to think of it, than the overlay. Yeah, but I did like the multiply, so I chose the multiply blend mode. And um, I pulled the opacity back to a 44. Of course, I could take it the whole way up and to get it really looking nice and gritty like that, but I didn't want that much. So I pulled it back to like a 44. And um, and that was basically all I did to it, except, no, I did do a little bit of layer masking. See my layer mask right here? So if we click on Edit Mask and click on Brush, you, you can see right here that I just brushed off 30% off this portion of the model right here. Okay, so I didn't want that texture on her right there. So I took it off and clicked done. So I just, I left some on, but I took a little bit off. And I was really, really happy with that. We're almost done. I added one more adjustment layer because what I needed to do, I felt her uh, hand and arms were a little, little bit too light. So I wanted to darken them up a little bit. And uh, I also wanted to add a little bit of a vignette to this image here, okay? So I came to the, clicked on the plus here and clicked on add new adjustment layer, okay? And that layer is right here. Let me click it on. And uh, I use the essentials tab and I click, just click on that here. And the first thing I did was I used the uh, light tool right here. And basically what he did was I just pulled the highlights the whole way to the left and the exposure back a little bit. And then I just masked it onto the arm here and the hand here. Okay. And if I click on the edit mask brush, you can see I just painted it right on there just to darken those up a little bit. Okay. And um, let's click done here. And let's click, well, I can't toggle this on and off, uh, but there you can see. If I actually toggle off the layer, we'll be able to see it here. So here is the before 
and there's the after. See how bright they were? And I don't want my eye being drawn here. I want my eye to be drawn into my model's face. So that's very important, especially when you're working on people. You always want to have the face a little bit lighter than the rest of the, like the hands or something like that. Because so, if you have these hands too light, your eyes are going to go towards them. And like, again, see, there's the before and there's the after. Okay, so that's important. All right, and then the last thing I did was went to vignette. Let's uh, turn this on here. And basically what I did with the vignette was um, darken the edges here a little bit and added a little bit of inner light. Let's toggle that off and on. Just draws a little bit of emphasis into our model here. And I adjusted the roundness a little bit and the feathering and the size. So, But that is basically it. So let's click this uh, eye right here. Let's see the before. So we came from here, which is a nice image right there all by itself, but we came to here. But I really like this stylized creative look, and I think it came out really nice. I'm really happy with it. Well, there it is. And I always like to uh, type my F key and put this into what I call presentation mode and really study your uh, image. And this one came out really exceptional in my opinion. It really came out nice, and I'm really happy with it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this edit today. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon, and then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.